Hello, my name is Paul Christensen. Uh, I'm an academic. I've been researching lithium-ion batteries for about 13 years, and I've been carrying out research into thermal runaway and thermal propagation in lithium-ion batteries, electric vehicles, etc., for the last four years. I make no apologies for the title of this talk. Follow these guidelines and your e-scooter or e-bike may, may not kill you or your family. Now, lithium-ion batteries are amazing devices, and I'm not trying to demonise them at all. They can store 10 times more energy than a conventional battery, maybe even more. And as such, they're brilliant for storing the electricity that's produced by renewable energy generators like wind turbines and solar panels. And as such, they are regarded as essential in our fight to decarbonise our planet. They also find wide application in a range of devices from mobile phones and laptops through e-scooters, e-bikes, also known as light electric vehicles, electric cars and vans, and right away through industrial battery energy storage systems to battery driven and hybrid ships and submarines. But in my view, the penetration of these fantastic devices into all levels of our society has far outstripped our knowledge of the risks and hazards. That's because this energy storage capability, the massive amount of energy in a small space, is a double edged sword. If it gets out in an uncontrolled fashion, it can and has caused rocket like flames or even explosions. And that's because if a battery, lithium ion battery, is abused by, for example, overcharging or heating or crushing, it generates very large quantities of explosive and toxic gas, at least 500 litres per kilowatt hour. Now, a kilowatt hour is a measure of how much energy the battery stores. So typically, an e-scooter battery is about a quarter of a kilowatt hour, whereas an e-bike battery is about three quarters of a kilowatt hour. So they will produce 125 or 375 litres of explosive and toxic gas. And some reports suggest they might produce up to 6,000 litres per kilowatt hour. Now, such large volumes of gas, when they're released, it means they're released at high pressure. If the gas ignites immediately, you get long rocket blowtorch like flames. They're extremely hot, 1,000, 1,200 degrees centigrade, maybe even 2,000 degrees centigrade. If, however, the gas does not ignite immediately, and ignites when the gas has filled the room, you can get an explosion. And this means that even small lithium ion batteries, those in e-scooters and above, can burn or explode and have done so. So a few examples. This is an e-moped shop in the United States. There's the vapor cloud, which then ignites. And you get that really hot blowtorch, long flame. Now, a characteristic of lithium ion battery fires is that they develop very fast. And so by the time the fire brigade arrives to your home, it's just a house fire rather than an e-bike or e-scooter fire. Here's the gas exploding from an e-bike. Uh, sorry, this is an e-scooter going up both fire and explosion. I believe this was a second-hand e-scooter and I would strongly recommend against buying second-hand light electric vehicles. This is the gas from an e-bike exploding. This is in China in a flat. The e-scooter is batteries are going into thermal runaway and what you will hear is the popping of the safety vents. The owner goes across to switch the charger off, which he shouldn't have done. He should have just gathered up his little daughter there and run out of the room. The 
dog was the most sensible creature there because it was off like a linty. The owner literally only had seconds. And this characterizes the problem again. You might only have seconds before a major vapor cloud explosion or those rocket like flames. The cost in terms of human lives and injuries has been terrible. If an e-scooter or e-bike or other light electric vehicle goes into thermal runaway in your home, you have roughly an 8% chance of being killed and a 64% chance of ending up in hospital. Every fire and explosion is and was preventable by some simple guidelines. Only by light electric vehicles, e-scooters, e-bikes from known and trusted companies, preferably well-known brands, only use the charger that was supplied with the light electric vehicle. Never buy in a light electric vehicle or indeed any lithium ion battery containing device that requires you to turn it off when it's fully charged. All lithium ion batteries should have a battery management system that does this automatically. And perhaps most importantly of all, do not charge your e-bike or your e-scooter indoors, full stop, period. If you absolutely have no choice but to charge indoors, do not charge when you're asleep or away from the building. Do not charge anywhere where there is material that can burn. Do not charge in an escape route or near an escape route. And if you hear a popping, a hissing or a screaming, or you see any kind of gas or smoke venting, do not attempt to deal with it yourself. Leave the building immediately, alerting any other occupants and phone the fire brigade. You might only have seconds from a major fire or vapor cloud explosion. Every death and injury was preventable if they'd been following these simple guidelines. If the victims had been aware of the risks and hazards, please don't become the next tragic statistic.